Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm super excited because I'm going to be introducing you to the brand new experience of writing and working with C-Sharp in Visual Studio Code. This has been in the making for quite a long time and we knew it was coming but it's finally out in preview and we can use it. So in this video I'm going to show you how you can install it, what it is, what we get on top of what we had already, and also raise a couple of minor concerns you should know about. Now you might be a bit confused if you watched yesterday's video, I made a video already on this which was pretty negative, but it turns out that I was alone mostly in thinking of the negatives of something like this, an initiative like this, so I can admit when I'm wrong and I took that video down and I'm making this instead showcasing what we are getting. I will still mention the thing I mentioned in yesterday's video, but that's in the end, just so you're aware. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and for more training, check out my courses on dometrain.com. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. I have good old Visual Studio code and if I go to extensions, you're going to see that I have the C Sharp extension, the OmniShop based extension that all the C Sharp functionality is based on. And with that, I can actually just load any project as a folder and start working on it. For example, if I select this folder over here, this is actually the folder on one of the workshops I run around the world where I teach people, in this case, testing, unit integration and performance testing. And if I expand things here, as you can see, I have my solution, I have my folder structure, not much context, everything is just a folder, but I can actually see my C sharp, so I can open something like this, my tests over here, and go into a service and, and see my tests. And I can't do much, but I can do enough, I can work on it, I have IntelliSense, so if I say logger, SUT, whatever, dot, I have all that goodness in here and I can actually work on the project. And if I want, I can use a terminal to create a new project, build, restore, clean, everything. So I have full C sharp capabilities here, but it's a more primitive version if you compare it with something like Visual Studio or Rider. But that is fine. It's very usable and many people have been making awesome products with this. Now, here's what we are getting. I'm going to just close this and I'm going to also close this folder. So we have nothing over here again. And I'm going to go into extensions and search for C sharp dev kit. And that is the brand new extension that actually completely enhances the functionality of C sharp in Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to choose this preview version and I'm going to say install. And by just installing, as you're going to see, we're also going to get this one installed over here, the IntelliCode for C sharp dev kit. Now, this is optional. I can uninstall it if I want and it will not remove this. But know that we can also have now IntelliCode support. And this is sort of additive on top of the OmniShop based extension. So now that we have both of them installed, what I can do is I can do the following. I can go back here and as you're going to see now, we have this create.NET projects button. And if I click on it, then as you're going to see, I'm able to choose one of the templates to create a project. So as you can see, I can just say, for example, here, create a new web API. Now I'm going to select the folder I want this to be created into. And then once I do that, I'm going to be asked for a very basic, hey, give me a name on this. And I'm going to say, example web API. You don't get many options like, hey, do you want authentication? Do you want Swagger support? Do you want this to be a minimal API or a normal? Like you don't get any of that. For now, you just get the name. I assume this will change in the future. And once you do that, by default, you're going to see the same folder view. However, and I wish this was a default, actually, if you collapse this, you're going to see this solution explorer over here. And now we have more something akin to what we are used to with, well, a solution and a project. So if I click here, I can see a proper C sharp highlighted solution over here with the weather forecast. Now ignore these small errors. There's a bit of a clashing with my .NET version. Uh, it's not much of a problem. I can easily fix that. But now we have this. And what's awesome about this is that we have contextual settings. So I can say, for example, clean this project and it will do it in the terminal over here. I can say rebuild this project and it's going to do that as well. So I have contextual settings and I can do things on the solution level as well. So clean, rebuild, close solution and all that goodness. And also things like create a new project, add existing project, add solution folders, things you would do in Visual Studio as well. Now, if I go and I load that previous big chunky solution again, then not only is loading pretty fast actually, but if I go to Solution Explorer, I have this very nice view where I can even see my source solution folder and my test folder over here. And I can go and open one of the test classes. And what's awesome about this implementation is that now I have a very nice test explorer, which I can just say, for example, here, hey, go ahead and run this test. And I'm getting this very nice view where it will just build the project by just pressing the play button, run the test. And as you're going to see, we have the test passing over here. And I can just say, hey, run all the tests in here. 
and it is going to do that. All four of them will just automatically pass. It is very, very handy, very, very nice. And since it is made by Microsoft, we know it's going to be very well supported. Now, another pretty neat thing is that you now have .NET related commands. So you can do things like rebuild, build, clean, new project, add existing project. I'm really, really nice functionality just by saying .NET, whatever I can just do, you know, build. And that is it. Now that is all fantastic, but I do have to mention a couple of things. First, this plugin is closed source. So this is not an open source plugin. You won't be able to see what is in there. And that is fine because the basic OmniShop based one will still be open source and you can use it for whatever you want, but sort of assume that most of the good features will actually be on the dev kit. And why can that technically be a problem? Well, because of the license. The way C Sharp DevKit is licensed is very similar to how Visual Studio is licensed. In fact, it is technically the same license. So for individuals, it is free. But if you're an organization who is not doing open source uh, under an OSI approved uh, license project, or you're not doing education or classroom training or any of that, then if you have more than five developers, then you have to actually pay for a license. And you're an enterprise if you or your affiliates collectively have either 250 PCs or users or make more than 1 million in revenue. And arguably that is absolutely fine because if you make the type of money, you definitely can afford a Visual Studio code license or a Visual Studio license. However, that also puts it against something like JetBrains Rider, which is the ID of choice for me, because Rider is actually cheaper than those licenses and it's also equally cross-platform and it has more features so if you're using visual studio code with the dev kit then it is not really the same free experience as it was before and you should be comparing it with JetBrains Rider and other IDs. However, it does mean that if you already have a Visual Studio license, whether that is professional or enterprise, you can actually reuse it to use C Sharp DevKit in your application. Just a thing I should mention, that was the majority of what I talked about yesterday, but it seems to not be that much of a problem for most people. So I cannot be when I'm wrong. And in that case, I definitely was. So that's all the information you need. That's only the beginning. It's only going to get better. And I actually root for this to be better because I do use Visual Studio Code in long flights. It is way better for my battery than Rider. So when I'm doing basic things, I am using it. And I really want to see how much of all those Visual Studio features the team can actually bring in here and have them in a truly cross-platform way, officially supported by Microsoft. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about this? And do you have any concerns or any worries? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.